Let's look at an example VRRP configuration. In this case, we have two distribution layer switches. They're both going to participate in VRRP group one. And the configuration of our switch on the left-hand side, it has an IP address of 10.1.10.2 slash 24 subnet mask. And the VRRP virtual IP address is 10.1.10.1 for group one. Notice that the virtual IP address does not belong to either of the switches. Therefore, the device with the higher priority will become the virtual router master. So the priority has been changed for group one on our switch to 110. It is being left at the default on the switch on the right-hand side. Therefore, our switch on the left-hand side should become the virtual router master. In addition, the timers have been modified here to a sub-second value of 500 milliseconds. And as a result, our switch on the left-hand side will be advertising a hello time of 500 milliseconds over to the router on the right-hand side. Let's configure VRRP on DSW1 and DSW2. And we're going to do this for group 10. So group 10 is going to be related to VLAN 10 and the IP subnet 10.1.1.0 slash 26. Let's verify which IP addresses we have on interface VLAN 10 for DSW1 and DSW2. So show IP interface brief, pipe to include VLAN 10. We have 10.1.1.1 configured on DSW1. And on DSW2, we have 10.1.1.2. Now there's two different ways that we can accomplish our goal of making DSW1 the virtual router master. Number one, we could use a virtual IP address that none of the routers are utilizing. So let's say our virtual IP address is 10.1.1.3. DSW1 and DSW2 is not using that particular IP address. Therefore, we would set DSW1's priority higher than the default, which is 100. So let's set it to 110 as an example. And as a result, since it has the higher priority and preemption is on by default, it becomes the virtual router master. Or we could simply use this IP address right here, 10.1.1.1, as that virtual IP address that all the PCs are going to use as their default gateway. By doing so, DSW1 automatically increases its priority to 255, and as a result, has the higher priority and will become the virtual router master. So let's do that in this particular scenario. Global configuration mode, interface, VLAN 10, VRRP. We said it was going to be for group 10. And now we want to configure the IP address. And the IP address is going to be 10.1.1.1. So this is the IP address that DSW1 specifically owns. Go ahead and enter. And as you can see, boom, automatically makes itself the master. Let's look at DSW2. Configure terminal, interface, VLAN 10, VRRP, group 10. And we're going to specify the IP as 10.1.1.1. So this is DSW1's IP address. It's the virtual IP address for the group. And as you can see, it immediately promotes itself to backup because it recognizes there's already a master in that group based on the hello packets that are being exchanged for VRRP. So let's examine DSW1. We can type in show VRRP. And so for group 10, we are the master. Notice the priority is 255. So we set the priority to 255 automatically. And if we go to DSW2 and type in the same command, show VRRP, we'll see from this output that Priority is 100 by default, and we remained at a priority of 100. Notice the virtual MAC address for VRRP. 00005E0001. So this is the well-known VRRP virtual MAC address. And the last two values represent the group number. So 0A in this case represents group 10. That's what it represents. It represents group 10, because A in hexadecimal is 10. So since it's only the last two digits that represent the group, we can have up to 256 groups with VRRP 0 through 255.
the timers. We can see the advertisement interval for our timers is one second. And as a result, our hold time will be three seconds by default.